you need to think about how you can come up with things that is unique to your family. I think that is very important. The thing with traditions is if we lose the meaning of why we do it, it just becomes mundane. And that's basically where we would get uh, a tradition from is like, hey, follow my example. And here's what we're doing as a family. So we're deciding what we want to celebrate or come up with our own family traditions. Is it pointing to Christ and remembering? Tradition is to remind you. Mm -hmm. And if you forget, then what are you doing? I'm Chuck Tate, and here at Fellowship of Believers, we encourage families, strengthen marriages, and edify the body of Christ. I'm Larry Grimm. We also promote biblical doctrine in a fun and engaging way. And I'm Sarah. And if it's Christian, we're talking about it. This is the Mike Charleston Show. Yeah, all right, guys. Well, uh, welcome to the Mike Charleston Show, and uh, this is the Mike Charleston Show. And Larry and Chuck are joined uh, with us today, and Sarah also. So yeah, today we got a subject for you that is kind of interesting for me to talk about because at the heart of everything, I think I'm an iconoclast. Oh, that's a big word. It Mm. is a big word. And uh, you know what that means? I do. Um, But it's it does mean someone who takes down uh, cherished beliefs, sacred cows, and things like that, traditions, and things like that. Well. Uh, we started this podcast talking about the church. We did, yeah. And we might even go back to that. And, I think uh, we should. Yeah, I think we should. And we kind of talked about where a lot of these traditions came from in the church and things like that, and are they good? Well, guess what we're going to be talking about today? It's it's the Thanksgiving week. <laughs> That's right. Tradition. Traditions. Yeah. Traditions. Yes. Thank you, Tevye. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, we're going to be talking about traditions, but in fact, the importance of it. So that's why it's kind of odd for me. But there are good contra- traditions. Absolutely. Oh. Uh, we're going to be talking about some good, there, there are good traditions and there's bad traditions. Right. And sure. in fact, Jesus talked a lot about them ignoring the law for the sake of their traditions. And and uh, there's a lot of traditions that get going and uh, they don't even know why they're doing it. That, and, yeah, exactly. And the church yeah. is one of them. Yeah, the Catholic Church could be one of them. So anyway, but you know why grandmother cut the end off of the <laughs> yes. ham? Yeah, that's uh, Larry and I were talking <laughs> about this week, and Chuck, you mentioned it. We don't know if this is actually a true story, but facts shouldn't ruin a good story. No, absolutely go not. I get <laughs> that's it right. away. Yeah, I, I forget the story how it went. But oh, I know. Uh, yeah, so if you got a better way of telling, I know it was a uh, a younger person asking mom, you know, why does why do we cut the end off of the ham? Why well, she was that? helping cook the things. So go ahead and tell the story because I don't well, know. As the far whole as thing. I remember, it's like this lady uh, was uh, getting ready for Thanksgiving or something, and they they she went and cut the ends off the the ham, and she was like, I don't even know why we do this. So she asked her mom why she did it. She said, well, I don't know. My mom did it. So they went to her grandmother and said, well, why did you do it? And she's like, oh, because our pan was too short. That's <laughs> right. It was in the pan. Yeah. Right. So in order to fit in the pan, and everyone just saw that and thought, hey, that's what we're supposed to that's do. And Speaking of traditions, I, I asked a nun if she wore her outfit because of tradition. No. She said, no, it's just, just a habit. A habit. You're right. Stephen did not get that one, by the way. <laughs> so, so, all right. So, what do we have then this week? So, so we have Thanksgiving. Yes, it's just around the corner. In yep. fact, if you're watching, if you're listening to this and watching it the day we put it out, uh, it's a couple days away. That's right. Right. So it's it's coming up Thursday, and if you're listening to this in the future. It's still coming up. I just don't know how long. (laughs) Either that or it just passed. It just depends. But if it just passed, that means it's coming up again. That's my point. So, yeah. So, yeah. It is coming around the corner, right? And for most people, that means a lot of family traditions. It is. And it is a special day. And in fact, of all the holidays, it's my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's mine, too. Yours, too. Yeah. Mine, too. Yeah. It's actually one that has a very legitimate religious overtone to it that, you know, we should be thankful. Right. And uh, we're not going to necessarily talk about that part of it. I think if you don't know that you should be thankful by this point, shame on you. <laughs> and you know how you show your thankfulness? By stuffing your face. That and by going out and buying more stuff. The next Buy day. More yeah. stuff. <laughs> Even that night sometimes. Yeah. Yes. it's That's the one thing. It's the tradition of Thanksgiving has been ruined by... Well, yeah, kind of, yeah. almost. It, it's getting there. Yeah. Because it was always the day after, but at least for that day, it was untouched until lately. Well, yeah. Now it's six o'clock. Yeah. Now it's even now. 
places are starting. Right. Oh, that's sad. It anyway, is. so anyway, I, I I saw last week a house down the road, lights all Christmas decorations already. I'm like, yes. it's not even Thanksgiving yet. Yeah. Yeah. But, but anyway. it is November and they're pretty. So, so speaking of traditions, <laughs> uh, I know we're kind of vamping here a little bit, and I know the YouTube is like. You guys just get to your subject. Well, look, this is a podcast, so deal with it. But we um, we went. This is my first time I ever went to a tr- very traditional wedding this past week. Oh yeah, That's it right. was a half Mennonite wedding and not so Mennonite. Half Mennonite. Well, because they they didn't go all the way, but there, there was a lot of Mennonite type things in the wedding. Uh-huh. And uh, so this family is no longer Mennonite, but they were Mennonite. Yeah. Okay. And in fact, the 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 husband to be is maybe dabbling into Mennonite. He, he goes to a Mennonite church. Right. Okay. okay. Right. So there was half the people there were Mennonite slash Amish. So when we say these are old order Mennonite horse people. Horse and buggy. Yeah, yeah. horse and yeah. buggy yeah. Mennonite. They're not like the Mennonites I grew up with where they just wore a little doily on their head and and uh, it didn't have radios in their car. But the <laughs> um, but these these drive around in horse and buggies and wear a black hat and black clothes and all that. And then the other half of the people were Englishers. And um, so anyway, the it was an interesting mix and it was a very bizarre wedding, you know, and I, I don't care where I'm open to all kinds of different traditions and different cultures sure. doing a wedding and all that. But this one was like, I'm trying to think of one thing that I would take away from this and be like, oh, that'd be interesting to implement into a wedding sometime. And I'm like, mm, no, I don't think so. Maybe the, the serving of the, 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 the cookies and the juice. Like they served food before it even started. Yeah, while you're sitting there. Which scared oh. me a little bit because I thought, how long is this really going <laughs> right. to be? <laughs> yeah, we're going to give you a snack. <laughs> right. You're going to want a snack. Well, at first it looked like communion because it was like these little oh. shots of... Well, when you said cookie and juice, that's what I thought you were going to. <laughs> well, it was but sparkling it was grape sparkling juice. Sparkling juice okay. and, and a cookie. And I'm like, okay. And the, the funny part was when we had to hymn sing, they're serving us cookies and juice while we're singing. Yeah, I know. Okay. I'm like, yeah, I'm eating. What are you doing? <laughs> but okay, I'm singing. How how am I? How's this going to work? Well, I will say that it was all very well organized oh, sure. because they had refreshments before. Then they had the full meal after, where everybody's sitting down oh, and they with serve like you. Yes. real oh, wow. real silverware. I mean, and and real cups for hundreds, cups, oh, couple hundred people. Two hundred fifty people, three hundred people there. So, and then they had later on a hymn sing, and then dinner to come later with a whole nother group of people. Right. Oh, so, you had lunch and dinner. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh. How long was the wedding? That? Well, the wedding, the wedding was itself was an hour, a, but yeah. it was just the whole day. And, and traditionally, a Mennonite wedding, you would meet in the house. So we were in the barn, okay. and uh, you know, but it's there was just way too many people. And that's why sometimes you're invited to the wedding, even though, like they were telling me, you could be around the corner in the kids' room and you you can't hear anything, but you're at the wedding. You're there. And then some people are invited for the supper. And, and so there's just different shifts. And I'm like, I, I just... That's bizarre. I don't understand. You know, I'm like, look, yeah, I, I'm that's... trying to understand how any of this makes sense. But, hey, I'm here. Uh, I'm doing my part and I'm eating. So that's, Was it good food? It was fine. It, yeah. it was fine. Yeah, it was fine. It, it Spaghetti? Was, no. No. Did they have pears? Uh, maybe. <laughs> it was just, ice cream? No. No. Oh, no applesauce no, either. No, no applesauce. No applesauce. Wow. No applesauce. They oh, said that that wouldn't be fancy enough for a wedding. Okay. So they had oh, yeah. homemade pudding oh. and like fruit cocktail, which didn't have pears. I don't believe. No, I, I, I'm not sure anyway. what the. But it was, it was. It was fine. It was. Uh, it was cold. Uh, it was up north, so it got yeah, colder. I mean. It was Kentucky. Well, people from Wisconsin were like, this is warm. And I'm like, yeah. I am free. this is like 38 degrees. It's called a refrigerator. So it's cold. But yeah, it's um, maybe their refrigerators aren't 38 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> well, the people from Wisconsin are mm, a little... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that you wanted be, to move up north. <laughs> that would be Larry G at Larry G32. What are you doing? <laughs> They're called cheese says for a reason. That's right. yeah. <laughs> My wow. wife is from Wisconsin. Right, yeah, <laughs> thanks a lot. Wow. <laughs> so anyway, sorry, right. Ellen well, Root. That's so that was uh, that was fun. And yeah. Um, yeah, you didn't. We didn't. You didn't have any elements. Your son-in-law was ex-Amish. 
Yes. Or is ex Amish. <laughs> and um, so there wasn't any elements in, in their weddings. No, there right. were. No. And, no. And now there are of them. Now, um, the, the meal for one of the brothers' weddings that I attended was, it was interesting because it's like you say, it was a full sit down. full meal, sit down meal. Everybody, that, that was a little different from what I was used to. Well, we have that here when you mm-hmm. spend $30,000. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, so. they get there before and cook everything. Right. Yeah. They're doing it themselves. <laughs> right. So, right. It's a big deal. They'll have a, a whole servants, you know, not, not, I shouldn't say servants, they, they are serving, yeah. uh, they're volunteering to serve. Yeah, right. And um, so that's interesting. Whereas the one that I went to your sister's wedding years ago, where we sat down and they served us, it was a fancy place, fancy food, and well, you paid for it. <laughs> you know, yeah, it was right. expensive. Exactly. So, all right, well, let's go ahead and get on with the show well, here. I mean, that's a good segue into traditions, traditions. wedding mm-hmm. is a that I might thought exactly. Right. That's why. So, that's kind of like a segue. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you call that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how well I ride one, though. So anyway, what do we have here? Where are we going next? So you got a question here. What childhood memories or traditions of Thanksgiving do you remember? Well, that's good. Uh, well, me personally, um, I remember going to both my grand grandparents' house. One in the, um, uh, for lunch and one for supper. And um, the the it, both families were so different. <laughs> so yeah. it was it was a very interesting um, concept. So my my dad's family was a little bit more traditional and maybe more family oriented. If I if I don't want to offend my mom, but <laughs> they and she probably would agree by far. But they would do a little bit. They had more traditional things that they would do. They would make this. They would do this, and we'd sit down and eat together. My 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 mom's family was. Not so much, and it was just a messy house. And but we just it was like a get together, and we would eat and we'd try to sit together. And it, but either way, it was both good, fine. I, I looked forward to it. It was uh, the desserts were always my favorite, oh, yeah. and yeah. um, so yeah, it was it was just a very long day by the time you got home. Now, I didn't have to work the next day. So I didn't care, right? right. Whatever you know. But today, if I had to do that, like if I'm my mom and dad, no way, not a chance. I'm not, I'm not doing that today. Anyway, what yeah. about you guys? We just, it, my mom brought out the actual real dishes. Oh, oh, so oh. Sweet. paper plates this right. time. That's okay, right. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> All right. She'd make. She'd get up early and roast the turkey, and then make gravy and all that. Did you help her cook? Not uh, no, because you weren't a cook back then, huh? No, and she'd get up early, <laughs> and you didn't get up early back <laughs> then either. No. <laughs> what about you, Chuck? So I remember going to grandparents' house um, <laughs> most of the time, uh, and it could be—I don't remember doing both, like you would say. It was seemed like it was one or the other, um, and I, I remember one. I remember one year actually having it at our home where both sets of grandparents came. Because I remember oh, the whole, nice. both families being together. But um, yeah, going to the going to the grandparents' house, having a meal together, have a sit down meal, and um, you know certain certain items that would only be there for Thanksgiving yeah. uh, that we would remember for food and things. So yeah, yeah, that, that was you know being with family. That was the big thing. I guess that's why I like Thanksgiving the most. It seems yeah. like there's. It seems like there's not a lot of expectation that goes along with it, mm-hmm. and it's just uh, you now there's a lot of work that goes into all the cooking. But I think, I think even those who do that enjoy it because there's not a lot of expectation. That's you know, it's just yeah. you, you're going to sit down and enjoy some time together around a meal, and then afterwards. So that, yeah, that's well, whatever. yeah, I like that fact that you said that both sets of families were there. But I, living in Mississippi, doesn't that happen a lot? At, well, at Mississippi, yeah. I was in Louisiana at the time. <laughs> Just messing. Wow. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Babe, uh, you have anything you remember? Um, I, remember going going, your... I remember going to Wisconsin. Going to Wisconsin. Mm. For Thanksgiving and being with my cousins and... At some point, we stopped doing that, and then we were home, and we just would get up early, and everybody would Sounds cook like together. Sounds like the Ingalls Wilder book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Going to Wisconsin with the cousins. So, and yeah, we would cook things that we didn't have the rest of the year, and it was nice because everything was shut, and usually nobody had to work, and so it was always good times. What's your yeah. favorite dish? Um, the chipped one that has been in the family. For, oh. You like uh, the oyster stuffing? No. Mm. <laughs> I like mince meat pie. 
I like mm. mashed potatoes and gravy, probably. Mashed potatoes and gravy. Yeah. Carrot souffle is pretty good, too. Yeah. Or the sweet potato casserole? No. He's not going to do that. No. He might potato. go for the 24-hour fruit No. No. Yeah. Turkey. And I'm, a, I'm a simple guy. Very basic. Uh, mashed potatoes and gravy. Anyway. So anyway, <clears throat> you guys like to try out the other stuff. Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, it's all good. I always like, because one grandmother did a cornbread dressing, which was actually... It wasn't dry. It was very oh, mean. Yeah. It was liquid cornbread dressing. And then my other grandmother did a um, um, stuffing. And it was a very savory bread oh, yeah. stuffing that she did. So I always liked the contrast between the two. Those were my favorites yeah. that I remember. Well, that's cool. Do you have anything you like making? I like making all of it except for the, the turkey. turkey. Yes. I can't stand <laughs> the turkey. It's just it's, a well, huge this year, raw. We're doing Italian. Okay. No. Italian. <laughs> no, we're not. Italian Thanksgiving. No, we're still doing a turkey. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, why don't we just jump right into it? Uh, why are traditions important? And uh, so, what do we have here? What's the what's our first point? Uh, they're important because they help to give us a sense of belonging. A sense of belonging. So, what what do we mean by a sense of belonging? Because th- did traditions really do that for us? Well, just like we talked about with Thanksgiving, it's about getting together with family. Right. Yeah. Immediate family, extended family. You're forced to spend a whole day right. with people you don't really care about. Oh, <laughs> That's not no. true. It's not true. Well, I, I met new people at, at these events. At like, Thanksgiving? Oh, yeah, you're my family? No, not really. No. The family, family reunions, that was sure. a different thing. Yeah, that was. Yeah. 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 But, but no, no, it actually brings you together. When you come together, you're part of... A family, yes. you know, even yeah. even for those who may not be true family who get invited, they yeah. feel like they're part of the family. Right. So well, you... and on a, a grander scale, uh, Thanksgiving is more an American tradition. It is. It's something we do as Americans, uh, as a country. We eat more. Great. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, even that, that's uh, going back to, because the story goes back to the pilgrims. Yes. And yes. it's. So it's something that unites us as a people, as a country, the, the, the tradition of Thanksgiving. Yeah, and, so and as long as we remember what it means, it's right. good. So we have the you know, shared activities create a sense of unity, and this is true in any, any group, uh, whether you're in the military and you have shared experiences that bond you together, get together, or whether you're in a sports team and you you go through training camp right. and you go through you do two a days and everyone hates the coach and that binds you together. <laughs> yeah. And uh, same thing in a family, you know, you you do things together, uh, you create special days, and we'll talk about this later about why it's important to do these things. But it is uh, well, actually we are talking about why, right. but the the uh, the nuts and bolts. Of them, but the um, it does create a sense of togetherness and unity. Right. So that's a that is a, a, a important part of yeah. traditions. And uh, so anyway, the, under that though would be also to create a sense of stability and to predict predict predictability. Easy for me to say. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the st- stability. So you have uh, holidays that are already in place. Now, we're going to talk about things that you can do yourself apart from, say, national holidays or religious holidays, things that you do in your own home that's just traditional that you you like to do and your family likes to do those things because that does give you a sense of stability and predictability. Like we know that it's coming, Thanksgiving's coming up. Yeah. We, we know when New Year's Year is. We know when yeah. Christmas right. is. We, we almost set the the... The shopping calendar, right. <laughs> <laughs> almost <laughs> pretty much. So yeah, a sense of stability and predictability. Did you want to add something to that? Well, it's just when you talk about stability and predictability with kids, it makes me think of routine. And so, what's the difference mm. between something that's routine and something that's a tradition? Yeah, well, I think kids need routine and they look forward to it. Like we'll talk, <laughs> we'll talk about this later uh, in, in the marriage segment. We're going to talk about the nuts and bolts. But I do think like. Kids, they, they almost rebel, like when I try to change uh, uh, a tradition. Like, no, 
You can't do that, Dad. <laughs> you, we got to do it like it. this. And I'm like, okay, I created the tradition, so I guess we got to stick with it. But they like that stability. They like that predictability. They enjoy that. And, yeah. and think about in your own life, we do like that predictability. Probably. Some predictability we don't like, like Mondays. Right. Like, oh, oh, you got to go back to work. Mondays. Yeah, I know you do. Okay. Uh, but a lot of people, unfortunately, like, like they live for Friday night. Yeah. You know, that is a, a predictability and, and there's a sense of stability on different things that we do uh, on Sundays. You know, people do get togethers on Sundays okay. afternoon for lunch with families. And I don't know what people do on Sundays. Well, I think maybe with tradition, it's more of often an event, something you look forward to, whereas routine is just, we always like right. daily. I always make yeah. my bed. Actually, you always make my bed, <laughs> but uh, but like camp or something like that. If there's a yeah. summer camp, people every year would go to off to to summer camp. Right. Yeah. Um, you look forward to those. That's events. right. You would. So yeah. yeah. All right. What what so, is why why else are traditions important? So the next one we have here is that it helps us to pass down values. Okay. Now this one, I'm like, okay, pass down values. Now I'm assuming these are things that we create ourselves uh, instead of just like. Um, Halloween, which we don't do, right. but how's that passing down values, you well, know, or, or Veterans Day, you know? Va- yeah, Valentine's Day. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know. What's the value so there? So I'm assuming these Cards. are things that we are yeah. creating ourselves. And or that- adopt from other people. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. 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 No, I was thinking the Old Testament when uh, God established the with the Passover. Told them that was to be a memorial for them forever. Right, right. It was a tradition that they, and it was to be the beginning of their year as well. Mm-hmm. Right. So it, it gives them a, opportunity to remember. Right. And yeah. repeat it. Right. In front of their children. Yeah. So they they don't forget. So as and that's a, the whole point, right? right? Of a, a tradition is to remind you. Mm-hmm. And if you forget, then what are you doing? You know, right. it, it just becomes a, a habit of just because we have to do this, yeah. but there's no real meaning behind it. But same thing with like, we get together at church and we do communion. Well, why do we do communion? Well, we all know why. I mean, it's to remember um, and look forward to the coming of our Lord Jesus. But, you know, sometimes we just, we get in a routine where it's just, doesn't mean anything, and we have to reflect on what we're doing. Why are we doing this? And 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 so some people, I don't think the answer is doing less. Uh, I mean, I was talking to one fella, and he was like, "Well, if you do it once a year, because they did communion once a year, it means more." And I won't tell you what I told him because it's not appropriate for the show. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm like, we don't do that in marriage. <laughs> yeah. Know, but anyway, <laughs> so uh, we don't save things once a year. It and, means more. <laughs> right. But uh, but anyway, you think about it. I mean, I don't, I don't eat once a week to once a week to um, really enjoy it. Right. I appreciate I it. Really appreciate. I mean, it. if you did, you probably would really enjoy the meal when you ate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you really enjoy it. Uh, extra significance. Yes, yes you would. <laughs> well. <clears throat> the thing with traditions is, that I think you brought a good point, is if we lose the meaning of why we do it, <clears throat> excuse me, you uh, it just becomes kind of mundane. Yeah. And oh, like yeah. you said, a routine. Right. Yeah. It's, it has no meaning. Even if it's Sabbath, you know, right. or if it's the, the Passover. Yeah. And like we mentioned, the coming up to Thanksgiving, it's I, it's my favorite holiday because it's not... They don't really commercialize it. You can't. There's nothing to commercialize. There's no Thanksgiving songs. Right, right. Think about it. Yeah, there's yeah. not. And Except for a couple. Yeah, Josh is <laughs> looking like, wait a minute. <laughs> but they're trying to they diminish Thanksgiving and overshadow it by the Black Friday sales. Yeah, they bring the commercialism and, in right. closer and encroaches. Yeah. But the tradition and the, the value that is to be brought or taught down or what am I trying to trans what am I trying to say you know what I'm trying to say Uh, sure I I don't forget about it (laughs) well it's kind of like we do such and such because and so it's it's a good time to say this is why we do this right and you know this is why we do this this is why we cut the ham the end of the ham off and uh, you know (laughs) we get to learn things that's right right. (laughs) and 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 to realize you know your 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 family history is important, you know, yeah. that your grandmother yeah. actually was a young person at one point. You're like, wow, okay. And she did the same things I did. Right. And, you know. Well, that's what I'm saying. Those things have meaning and they should. 
And Thanksgiving is one a time to be thankful and reflective of what God has done right. for and us. You get to hear from and, right. the the older generation. Yeah. Of, you know what did you do when you were a kid? Well, how did y'all celebrate Thanksgiving? Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right. We'll take the doors off the hinges and go out into the yard to have dinner. What? What? You didn't know that? that what? Right. So they didn't, didn't have, have a tables. lot. Of, they didn't have like big rooms, so they oh. take the doors off. Put them on sawhorses, yep. basically, and oh, that became yeah. the table. That's Interesting. Right. Yeah. Okay. I forgot about that. Oh, that's cool. So Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 7 talks about this, right? Yes. Says, and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Now, if you're a homeschooler... <clears throat> I'm sorry. It's catchy. <laughs> yes. If you're a homeschooler, you know that verse. You yeah. Know, this is like the homeschool verse. But this is a life verse for everything in life. But, you know, specifically, we're talking about traditions and things. And this yeah. is a good way to teach and to, you know, share those things with our kids. And especially with the the more religious traditions. When we say religious traditions, I'm not talking about Christmas and Easter. Of course, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. But I'm sp- I'm specifically saying things that maybe we come up with that's very traditional in what we do and, and as regard to our worship to God. And um, sometimes we say, oh, tradition's always bad, and that, that would be me, right? <laughs> but not always. Some of these things need to be very stable. And getting together with other believers should yeah. be traditional. We should get together right. often and at least weekly, you know, and get together. And those are fun. Or having those bigger events with other bigger believers at yeah. conventions or things Should like that. Be. Or family yeah. camps. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, having those things. Those those are uh, very important. So, all right. So, so another reason that the traditions are important is it creates family bonds. I think we kind of just talked about we this did. already. Kind yeah. of very similar to what right. we just so said. So they, they, we do things together in general, creates a bond, creates memories. Obviously, doing things together as family creates memories. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I think that's pretty obvious. But it does, uh, traditions do create family bonds. So I don't know if we want to go more into that. We talk, kind of talked about in number one. Yeah. So then the finally fourth point. we had is often they'll involve celebrations and festivities that bring joy and excitement. Yeah, life. these are usually fun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how many traditions are terrible? Well, if you, yeah, hopefully you don't have those. Every, right. every <laughs> spring we clean out the garage. Well, I can see how some people would be, we have a, um, you know, if you had a loved one die very young and they have a memorial or whatever, a, 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 they remember that. Kind of yeah. like Memorial Day. It's a very right. solemn holiday, even though we, we we grill out and we cook out. But it is a, a time to remember those mm-hmm. that have, have paid the ultimate price. Yeah. Uh, for yeah. our country, and and sometimes we forget about that, yeah. <laughs> and we just want to go to the sales and eat the burgers and hot dogs and things. Um, but there there are some that are a little bit more solemn, I guess. But for the most part, let's let's be honest. You know, uh, traditions are fun. The right. the, the yeah. holidays and traditions, things that we do. Yeah. If they weren't fun, we wouldn't do them. <laughs> no. Pretty much. <laughs> and I think God even enjoys. He he's given them festivals. He gave them things. Uh, I think seven festivals a year. Mm-hmm. And the Jewish people would look forward to those That's things, right. and it would be a fun thing. It wasn't like, oh, I guess we got to go do this one, you know. And yes, the, each each one had a very specific thing they had to do. Like Passover was definitely a specific thing to yes. do. Yeah. And then uh, Purim was a very different thing, you know, than that. And then the Feast of Booths was different than that, it, you know. And they, they all had their special flavor, but they... Um, probably look forward to doing them, you know, just like we look forward to doing certain holidays. Yeah. Like, Fourth of July, Jeremiah and Joshua and my family loves it. I can't stand it, but because I don't like blowing things up. It's and like they, you don't like the burgers? No, I, I like, oh, I don't okay. mind the holiday itself. I mean, celebrating independence, whatever. Mm-hmm. But the food and all that's fun. You don't, don't like the fireworks? I don't like fireworks. If uh, you could have them quiet, yes. it'd be okay. Oh, yeah. I just They're don't. too loud? Is that the... I don't like big sudden noises and okay, like well, that thunder. would be a fireworks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> gunshots, uh, fireworks. We need thunder. to find the fireworks with the silencer on them. Yeah, that'd yeah. be cool. But you just want to go in with the dogs, right? I would like <laughs> to, much. but as I've gotten older, I've gotten better. <laughs> but they love to blow things up, mm-hmm. and um, just as our founding fathers would like, you know. Right. But um, <laughs> so, so we got a number of scriptures here that relate to tradition, specifically some of them have tradition in the scripture, and some of them are more relatable. But um, 
take a look, see what the Bible has to say. About Absolutely. Tradition. So, Second Thessalonians two fifteen it says, therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught whether by word or our epistle. Okay, so I want to stop and talk about this one for just a second, because we are going to get into a word, tradition, that the Catholics love to use. Yeah, And so they think that tradition is on equal par as the scriptures. And so we're keeping the early church fathers' traditions. And we have to remember that traditions are doing something, you know, it's, a, it's an act. And Paul is telling them to keep to the traditions that he was taught by them. Uh, so he obviously told them to, to do certain things and to keep that going. And uh, the Catholics would like to think that it's the teachings themselves that grow upon each other and that we, we learn from tradition. And this is, he believed it, so we don't ever change it. Augustine said it, so therefore we're never going to change because that's tradition. So I want to differentiate, you know, tradition in that way. You know what I'm saying? I think so. Okay. I think yeah. so. I just, <laughs> well, the Catholics, you know, base the, everything on tradition right, yeah. and, and, and kind of like the Jews did in a sense, but the Jews got their tradition at least mostly from God. Right. Now, they don't put the traditions on equal standing with the scripture. scripture. Yes. And so that was the danger. Now, the, the Jews did come up with what they called the tradition of the fathers, which was like the hedge laws that protected them from getting to the law. Mm-hmm. And that was made up, but it was basically to keep them from the law. Now, the, the Catholics do have traditions and their traditions, uh, sorry, Catholics, just don't lead you to Christ. Yeah. You know, they just don't lead you to Christ. So in this verse, we want to be careful. Hold the traditions which you have been taught. Uh, whether by word or by epistle. So, you know, Paul is telling him to live a certain way. And that's his point. Is just he, he wants to live a certain way. Um, so I think that's a very important thing. Well, also, if he's talking to a Jewish audience, the traditions they would have been taught would have been like the Passover. And you look at Passover, the picture there is Christ. Right. We are put in Christ and his blood protects us. It covers us. And so that's the picture. So those traditions have a deeper meaning than that relate, that we can have understanding of what it means now right? with the completion of the scripture. So though I think maybe that's perhaps what he's talking about. Yeah. And then this next verse, uh, 2 Thessalonians 3, 6, it, it's, it's just another Another verse that uh, talks about what we just talked about. So go ahead. It says, Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. So the tradition is obviously in a walking. It's, it has something to do with they were walking disorderly and not after the tradition. So it's not necessarily a belief system or a traditional way of going to church and uh, going to the, the priest and, and all that tradition that like the Catholics would say, but it's a walking, it's, uh, they were walking disorderly and he says, stay away from them that are doing that because they didn't, they're not following after the, the tradition and, and tradition may be a, an odd word there. Um, looking it up uh, in the Greek, I forget, uh, I should have made that note, but it's not like in the tradition sense, you know, but it's, it's a, a way of living here that uh, walk after I have taught you, after yeah. I've shown you. Follow uh, my example. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Basically like that. And um, after you've received of us. So uh, follow my example in this this way. And, and that's basically where we would get uh, a tradition from is like, hey, guys, follow my example. And here's what we're doing as a family. And yeah. it would be nice if my kids followed after some of my... Things that I came up with, right. I don't know. Some <laughs> of your traditions. That's right. Yeah. Right. So Proverbs 22, 28. It says, remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Okay. So what's the context here? This is, you know, the, why why not remove the la- ancient landmark? Well, that actually has a deeper meaning and it has actually a meaning significance for today. Sure. They, It says not to remove them. They're there so that when you see them, they you can remember you. what happened. Right. Mm-hmm. We have statues of different people in our country and stuff. It's a reminder. We see them as like, okay, who is this guy? And then you have a chance to learn. Right. The significance of that is 
now in progressive circles, and they want to remove those because once you remove them, then that history is gone. Right. right. Because it point you back to remember it. Yeah, there's nothing they to want go you back. to forget. Like North Korea, their history starts with what's his name? Kim Jong Un's father. Kim Jong Il. Yeah. Nothing happened before. Or his grandfather, whatever. Yeah, nothing happened before he took power. Their tradition, their history is gone. Right. And because they removed those monuments, those boundaries. So they do have significance in right, that. Even if they're him. they're not the greatest uh things to remember. Right. Well, that's the important thing is that you take the good and the bad. Right. Because then you can learn from the bad and say, "Oh, let's not repeat that." We have that reminder. That's why like in Germany they still have the Auschwitz. Yeah. As a reminder to say would this be is Poland, what actually. happened. What's that? I think that would be Poland actually, right? Uh yeah, I think you're right. right. Yeah. But yeah. same idea. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Over but, there. Yeah, over there somewhere. <laughs> And that European country. But you have but, people wanting to take those things down. Right, exactly. Sure. And then you take them down because then there's no remembrance. There right. will be a generation where they will remember it, but after right. that, it's gone. Yeah. Well, I think it was in, in Joshua that he they told him to put up the stones right. and all this yeah. to remember what God has done. When they crossed the Jordan. Right. 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 And I think that a, is, the for, for Christians, this is the heart of the matter for us, is what kind of things that we come up with that's going to point us to God. Yeah. It, you know, we can come up with things that celebrate, you know, the birth of a country, and I'm not, I'm not saying that's a bad thing to do, but... You know, is that more important than pointing us to God? You know, is 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 trick or treat? You know, something I don't do. But <laughs> Halloween, you know, more important. You know, pointing to God than or pointing to whatever. So it's uh, Valentine's Day. You know, all these days. Right. What, what is the point? Yeah. So the things that we come up with as families, uh, as heads of homes, as we're we're deciding what we want to celebrate or come up with our own family traditions. Is it pointing to Christ and remembering? And in in the marriage segment, we'll talk about how we came up with ice cream night and uh, other traditions in our own family. But the um, I think everyone will have some sort of tradition there. But let it be to be an ancient landmark to point to Christ. You know, not to um, or some kind of faith. You know, the uh, remembrance of of that. You yeah. know, instead of just. Some random thing, you know. Yeah, I remember when the Chicago Cubs won the World Series <laughs> yeah. in 1906. So anyway, or just get caught up in consumerism or commercialism, whatever you want to say there. Right, but th- because those things don't have any deep meaning to them. Well, I was talking to Sarah before the show about this, and what frustrates me is so we have a few religious holidays in our countries that. I don't really do much with, but Christmas and Easter and things like that. And I said, shouldn't our celebration of those holidays have a direct impact on what we're supposedly celebrating? So, like, supposedly Christmas is the birth of Jesus and Easter the resurrection of Jesus. But what does a tree and lights and presents and Yule logs and mistletoe and Santa Claus have anything to do with the birth of Christ? Nothing. Like Halloween has it's a it's a celebration of the Day of the Dead, you yeah. know, and all that. And what's their celebration? Dressing up like skeletons, <laughs> right. you know. So you get candy. At least it. Well, yeah. <laughs> That'll kill you. So you can die, yeah. <laughs> right. So it, it it fits the celebration that's going on, even though we don't like it. Yeah. But why doesn't for for religious holidays, what what does bunnies have to do with the resurrection? Oh, you got know? eggs. <laughs> okay, well hide them. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so the um it doesn't make any sense. There should be a correlation to what we're remembering. Well, actually there is. I mean, because Easter, the real meaning of it is the celebrating of the fertility gods. Well, I understand that, but I'm just saying people who who are trying to Christianize them, you know, but I I would be all right with people Christianize them to to change the the tradition that you do. Change. It's got to point to Christ. Yeah, don't have a, a sermon about the resurrection of Jesus Christ and then have a children's Easter egg hunt after. The service. Right, it doesn't have anything to do right. with the two. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. Where it's not remembering why we are doing this. And so, like the Passover, 
everything they did was to remember right. what was their deliverance and uh, from Egypt. So you know they they do that perpetually as a yeah. remembrance of that. So yeah, make know, sure that our traditions are pointing back to Christ. I remember one of the most meaningful um, times I had for an Easter was actually a, a church we went to. Um, I don't remember who I went with, but we went to it uh, for a Friday night service. Okay. And basically, the the service brought you to the point where Jesus was crucified and and laid in the grave, and it ended there. Oh, because it was Good Friday. And it was good. Yeah, right, it was right. considered Good Friday. But the fact that it ended there, and you walked away, and at that point, it just left you with this feeling that he was dead. Right. And so it actually made you long and hope for the hope that you know the resurrection was coming. So I, I yeah. yeah, that was like that was an interesting way of doing it, and yeah, it yeah. really brought some significance to. Uh, otherwise, not significant yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, it, it's got to point to something important. Yeah, it's got to mm-hmm. connect in some way that makes sense. I would think, but you know, I'm not the traditional police, so <laughs> whatever. Uh, what do we? Okay, so we're almost done here. What's uh, what do we have here, babe? Um, well, I just had what makes Thanksgiving a particular special opportunity to have family traditions because to me, Thanksgiving. I mean, it's all of our favorites, and because right. it centers around being thankful. Yeah, and I think that's that's it. It puts us in yeah. a it puts us in a mode where we're that's what it's it for us to be thankful. Yeah, absolutely. And we're all thinking about you know what are the things we're thankful for, and that's obviously awesome. when you get together with family, that's that's yeah. the folks that you're very thankful for. Well, so specifically it, it for you those. Well, for specifically for Thanksgiving, um, it's one of those holidays where not much is expected. Like you don't have to go buy presents, right? Right. right. You don't have to go dress up, and, and you might want to dress up, but you know you, you don't have to. Do, you don't have to decorate your yeah. house, and and you don't have to do all these different things um, to prepare. You just do a meal, which is something. I'm not saying it's nothing, but it's not like uh, it's not one of the more expensive holidays. Yeah. It's a lot more subdued, and family comes together. It's a four day weekend most. Unless yeah. you work uh, like oh. Levi does <laughs> and, uh, on Good Black Friday, on Good Friday, uh, Jeremiah Black used to always call it Good Friday. Oh, Friday. Friday. <laughs> I'm like, no, son. It's well, big. for us, the, I mean, speaking of family, this is going to be a, a odd year for us as a family because we're scattered as yeah. our fa- my family because Jonathan's in Arizona, Andrew's in Florida, who just got married yeah. and. They don't want to travel, no, because they just got back from a family trip. trip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Amanda and Jenny Kate are in Virginia, yeah. Although Jenny Kate and Jeremiah are coming, I was going to so. say they're going to be here, right? So that's going to be for us. So that's something for us to look forward to because yeah. now at least part of well, of course Riley's here because he lives with us. I was going to say yeah. Riley is here, <laughs> but yeah. So uh, our, that's what. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it's going to be this year is going to be different for us. It'll be a first for us because we're actually going to go um, to be with uh, Hannah and Rebecca. We'll be in Ohio for Thanksgiving. Going to go see our new granddaughter, and um, we're going to have Thanksgiving dinner with um, the Shrocks. Yeah. So um, I'm interested to see if there's any traditions that, uh, yeah, that yeah, probably. I haven't seen before. Yeah, yeah so, probably. Yeah. I'm guessing. Well, so it'll this, be interesting. This year will be different for us because oh, we won't yeah. have all our kids. That's first right. time. First Thanksgiving with. Without, uh, no, Jeremiah, yeah, Jeremiah showed up last year. Yeah. So, yeah, first one without everyone. Yeah, because Abigail so, won't be here. Yeah. Yeah. But, Whatever. But that's why I'm thankful that we're here because now we have. Yeah, more family. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. right. So, so before we end it uh, and move on to the next segment here, the, uh, well, how about you read this verse first and then I want to say something okay. here. Okay. First Thessalonians 5.18 says, and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Wow, this is the will of God. Think about it. You want to know what yeah. the will of God is? Give thanks. Give yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's one of the, the, you struggle with the will, give thanks. But that's a, that's a good verse for, for, for Thanksgiving. And we're talking more than just Thanksgiving, but yeah. this is Thanksgiving week. Yeah. But uh, I will say this, you know, you know, fathers and mothers, but really fathers, you need to think about how you can come up with things, uh, traditional things, if it's weekly, monthly, uh, yearly even, you know, that is Unique to your family. I think that is a very important thing. That is something that is unique to your family. I know everyone here does something unique and different that is kind of like, oh, well, I kind of like what Chuck does there. Uh, Larry, I I, I don't know what Larry does, um, actually. So (laughs) I I mimic you. (laughs) Okay. 
Um, Larry? Yeah, I, I don't. <laughs> what are you? I'm sure doing? he does something different, and um, but you know that's unique, and um, that doesn't have to be sp- anything special. Right. You, you know, like hey, we just we sit around and read as a family in the evenings. Oh, well, that's interesting. Every night, no, we'll, we'll do it like once a week, and the kids look forward to that. You know, you're like, oh yeah, we have ice cream night. You know, or whatever, whatever it is. Try to figure out something. That is something you do, and the kids look forward to this, and it has a purpose. It's not just for fun, even though that could be fun too. I mean, just yeah. do it for fun. But uh, but I would encourage you to really get those things because there are negative aspects of traditions. Trust me, if you listen to the show, we cover those. But we're gonna. There's actually good things. The Mike Charleston Show. History with Larry. <laughs> All right, as you can see, Larry's sitting next to me. I get a so, special chair. Yes. It's like a promotion. So we've been working on this. <laughs> this is going to be fun. This is uh, the Thanksgiving episode. And so for history time... No history time We're going to dress up like pilgrims. No, we're not going to yeah. dress up like pilgrims. In fact... So uh, there was a show I used to watch a long time ago. I think it's still on, on ESPN, uh, PTI, Pardon the Interruption. And it was with Michael Wilbon and Tony Kornheiser. But anyway, every year around Thanksgiving time, they did the Turkey Awards. Now, Turkey is, when you talk about someone being a turkey, is just someone who has done something stupid or dumb or something like that. So that's kind of the context where we're here, that in the church, you know, there are some things that has happened in the past couple of years, and we we could go on for oh, an yeah. hour. Yeah, we got some good ones. We, we're going through a lot of stuff this week, and uh, so we're going to try to get through this pretty quickly. And uh, Are but we going to do like, uh, go through them, and then did you want to vote? The, the on worst what one? you thought was the best? Oh, we could maybe at the I'm end, just... but uh, I don't know. Each one, you're, you got the gobble gobble sound effect. You're gonna at the end, they get a turkey award. Uh, but I, I'll, I'll, we can talk about our favorite at the end. Uh, yeah, there are some good ones. I don't know, man. These are, <laughs> these are, uh, these are terrible. So I guess I will go ahead and start, and then you get the second one, and. Uh, so yeah, oh, okay, we got the music. Got okay, the music. so All coming right. up, number one, Dante Bo, formerly of the band Maverick City Music. He was removed for posting himself in a party bus with half-naked women singing a Bad Bunny song that was filled with expletives. What a dope. Yes, Dante Bo, you get a turkey. Oh, uh, it's a good Christian award. Yes. All right, number two, Bobby Storm. Uh, this happened just recently. Yes. She was on. She was with Maverick City. I guess she, she still is. Maverick City Music. She was on a plane <laughs> and decided to bless everyone with her new song. Yes. <laughs> Needless to say that not everyone enjoyed it. No. And uh, it didn't go over very well. And to to but to her credit, she did stop. When she, and then uh, but before that, she was saying that she was that the Lord told her yes. she should. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> Bobby Storm. No one wants to hear your song. No. In fact, you get a turkey for so this. Gets, yeah. but in fact, maybe you should get the advice of the next guy. Oh, oh, yeah. There you go. So yeah. the next guy is Kenneth Copeland. This is from a few years ago, but he is confronted by a reporter asking why he needs many personal jets. Well, just listen in and look at his response. You said that you don't like to fly commercial because you don't want to get into a tube with a bunch of demons. Do you really believe that human beings are demons? No, I do not. And don't you ever say I did. (laughs) Right. Get in an air, get in a long tube with a bunch of demons. Right. That's exactly the And it's it's deadly. Yeah. Well, there you go. Sorry, (laughs) Kenneth. I think you did say it. But uh, maybe uh, Kenneth should stick to blowing away COVID. Yes, COVID. Yeah. I mean, yes, Kenneth, you get a turkey. (laughs) And number four, Andy Stan- Andy Stanley. Yeah, he's got a lot to choose from. Yes. From denying the Old Testament to saying homosexuals have more faith than Christians. That was uh, shocking. Yes. You know, that was, uh, and then <laughs> the best one, I think, is having uh, a cover band. Is that what you call it? Yes. They did uh, Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven <laughs> for, to open their church service up. Yes. That was... 
I don't know if Larry's good at doing this because he's laughing the I whole know. way through. <laughs> so, it's, it's just, he can't do it. I know. I'm sorry. I uh, he's, he's losing his mind. <laughs> so, uh, Andy, you get many turkey <laughs> awards this year. Number five, Bethel Church. Speaking of many turkeys, oh, uh, straight from the Lord of the Rings convention walks in prophetess Mar- Marilyn B- B- uh, Barnett, Bar- Barrett. Uh, from Pasadena, dressed like Gandalf the Wizard. Yes, I'm talking about Gandalf, that Gandalf. Uh, She does some LARPing while ending racism in the church. Take a look. So as an apostolic team with the authority that God's given to us, we decree and declare that racism will end. It's over in the ecclesia from this night forward in Jesus' mighty name. Let's lift it up and bang it. (laughs) Hallelujah! Come on, give you me a praise shall not over. Pass. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 she's that's... quoting the line from Gandalf. She got her inspiration from the movie Lord of the Rings. Thou shalt not pass. So you know what, Bethel, you get many, many turkeys this year. <laughs> Maybe next year you can end up steal, uh, end stealing in the church by dressing up like Kevin McAllister and declaring, I will defend this house with a BB <laughs> gun slung around your back. So speaking of guns. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good one. Juanita Bynum. Yep. She, she goes on talking about special anointing oil. That came from her aunt and bishop, and then puts the oil in a water gun. A water gun. A water gun. And she's going to, uh, I guess, anoint the congregation as she's... <laughs> she's going to shoot the devil. It's going to shoot the devil. See, it's well, hard not to laugh. I know. It, 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 these are ridiculous. But yes, yeah, so what a turkey. So speaking of anointing, Michael Todd. Now, this one is disgusting. I warn you ahead of time, but this is an, il- he was given an illustration of Jesus healing a blind man and decides to demonstrate. Now I won't show the whole clip because I almost gagged uh, myself watching it, but he spits a number of times in his hand and <laughs> then smears it on another man's face. This is disgusting. disgusting. He later apologized, but not before. Yes, Michael Todd, you get the Turkey award. It's terrible. <laughs> it's so nasty. But yeah, he later apologized. But anyway, well, so you know, he, But uh, he planned this. I know, he That's, did. Yes. So anyway, yeah, big turkey award for that Number one. eight. <laughs> Number eight, Heidi Baker. And this one is, it's an older one, but a goodie. Yes. And uh, she claims in heaven that she saw a room in heaven with a bunch of spare body parts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, a room full of body parts. A room full. Yeah, we'll take a listen to this one. I got to see the rooms in heaven, and they were amazing. And there was everything there. There were there. Were, the first room was the most bizarre, bizarre thing I've ever seen. I walk in there with the Father. He tells me, "You open the door." He gave me the keys. He said he prepared these rooms, and I didn't know what that meant till I went to heaven and I saw him. And I went in, whoosh, and there was all these body parts. There was every kind. Of, there was ears and eyes and noses. There was intestines. There were legs. There were feet. There were all these body parts. He said, "Oh, you can go in there any time." I said, "I can't." Yeah. No. He says, "Yeah." Yeah. I'll tell you when to Yep, that's that's <laughs> Heidi Baker, and you know what? Just for that, you get a turkey leg. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see what I did there? That's right, it's turkey leg. <laughs> turkey. All right, and last. Oh, okay, save this one for last. Jen Johnson, yes, she's a Bethel, and uh, she comes from Bethel, and at a ladies' event, some ladies' events, I think it was, it was a bunch of ladies talking, but uh, she just wondered what the angels are doing, because we all wonder what the angels are doing around the throne. She thinks around the throne, they are doing other things other than praising God. Take a listen. Yeah. And I thought of those angels circling that throne, and I thought, I bet they text each other. No. Yeah. I bet they have the latest iPhone. I bet they have farting contests. I don't think so. Yes, no, no, Jen, you should stop. Yeah, and uh, for I don't that, think so, Jen. Well, yes, you get a turkey award, <laughs> Jen Johnson. Speaking of that, can I give an honorable mention? An honorable mention, okay. <laughs> Let's go. It follows with that one. Is he calls himself? I don't know if this is his real name. He's in Africa. South oh Africa. yes, Christ Penelope. I get. We and uh, we're trying to get verification for this. This is why we didn't. <laughs> yeah, he uh, claims to heal people by. Sitting on them, 
and sitting on their face or their heads and farting. Farting. Yes. yes. Uh, and why do people believe this? So yes, this is this is this year's or the last couple of years. We've been wanting to do this for the last couple yeah. of years. It's a lot to put together, but this is this year's or whatever the Turkey Awards, the Christian Turkey Awards. Oh, there's some good ones. What yes, be your favorite? Everyone gets. You didn't give a gobble to everybody. You do that in post. Oh, my favorites. Okay, going back to our favorites. Uh, I have no idea. The uh, I got two. Okay, one was the. Uh, the last one with uh, what's her name, uh, number nine there. Uh, yeah, that Johnson. one's a good one with the the angels in heaven. <laughs> yeah, and the uh, Juanita Bynum. Uh, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> a water gun. What are you doing? Make it stop. <laughs> Kenneth Copeland getting caught like that and just you're so stupid. Uh, yeah, just stop. <laughs> So anyway, that's All what right, we got man. for history time, and hopefully you guys enjoy that. We had a little fun doing that, and uh, that's it. The Mike Charleston Show. Music with Sarah. What song do you like? All right, babe. This is your song of the week. And uh, this one is kind of new, but kind of isn't. Kind of. Yeah, you're right about that. Because I thought it was, I mean, it was new to me several years ago when somehow we came across that I don't remember how. But anyway, um, the song is called He Giveth More Grace. And we heard it by Seven Arrows, which I've never heard of in my life. Never, never, me neither. But um, the album is called Walking as a Pilgrim. So I thought it was by Walking as a Pilgrim, but apparently that's the name of the album. So Right. Evidently, we looked it up and Don Moen wrote it. Well... I, I found out same. more today. It actually was a hymn written by, originally by Annie Johnson Flint. Oh, okay. Who lived late 1800s, early 1900s. And she originally wrote it. And okay. so I don't know if Don Moen, I don't know Just if his version the was a little bit different. And then they changed the musical arrangement. What's their, we don't know where it originally came from. So the words and all that came from Annie Johnson Flint years ago. They did. And so these words actually. Do you think she's from Flint, Michigan? Um, no, she's from New Jersey. Oh, okay. And she actually had an interesting story I was reading about today. And she, um, her mom died three years after she was born mm-hmm. when she was having her sister. And then her dad had some debilitating, life-threatening disease, and he died. And he had willed the kids to some other family, and they ended up dying. Good so, night. She, maybe she shouldn't go to these family members. So anyway, and she ended up actually having also a lot of health problems. She was a teacher for a while, and then... Mm. Couldn't teach because her arthritis was so bad and ended up being confined to a wheelchair. And so she had quite a story. And when you look at the song and the words of the song, um, he giveth more grace. When the burdens grow greater, he sendeth more strength and the labors increase. That was really true of her life. Mm. And she really did have a hard time. And the way that Seven Arrows does it is right. really the only, I mean, I listened to a few other versions today and they were pretty different. And You I like mean, the way that Seven Arrows does it? Yeah, maybe because that's how I heard it first. I where don't did know. you even come up with, where did you hear it originally? Do you remember? I don't remember. I, we just hear a bunch of songs. Uh, and, it's been a lot of years because I feel like that was, I mean, yeah, that was a lot pre, of years ago. Um, Pandora and Apple iTunes and right. So oh, yeah. I'm not sure, but um, the chorus says, "His love has no limit, His grace has no measure, His power has no boundary known unto men. For out of His infinite riches in Jesus, He giveth and He giveth and, and He giveth, giveth again. again. And God doesn't have any limit to His resources right. and everything that we need. When it says He gives us everything we need, He has endless things to give us. So right. it's like it's never going to run out. And so it's a very um, I don't know, it's a very pretty song and just very true, all of these words. And the second verse says, When we have exhausted our store of endurance and our strength has failed, and the day's only half done. And it's like we're out of strength. And it's like, but that's when, when we reach the end of all our resources, our Father's full giving has only begun. Yep. And so... Very true words, very beautiful song, and I think people should know about it. Yeah, it's not a very, like, it's not a, a modern song in any stretch. No. It's just a very simple song. It, it sounds like a hymn. Yeah. So, which and, makes sense. Right. That it, it was an, uh, a hymn style, right. and um, and they, they did their own little twist to it, I guess. Or uh, If you know the original, please email us and let us know, and uh, we'll be glad to find out. Yeah. But, well, I mean, Abigail did look in a hymnal today, and she played it. 
and it was different than what we know. Okay. But was you know. it different than Don Moen's, or was it? I, you know, I don't everyone know. has a different version. So hey, yeah. take the words and make your own version. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, go check it out. You search online these days. It just I don't even know if Seven Arrows. Do we have a, a link? Did you find it online somewhere? Um, I mean, it's on Spotify. It is on Spotify. So. Okay, so you check it out online. Seven Arrows. He giveth more grace. The Mike Charleston Show. Marriage. All right, babe. We are this this episode is kind of about tradition. And it's usually tradition that you ask me a question, but I'm going to ask you a question real quick. So keeping with the theme of traditions and stuff and families get together and how can traditions help strengthen your marriage? Well, I think it's pretty simple with all that we've talked about. When, When you do things together... And especially when it comes to tradition, it creates those bonds. And so yep. that's exactly what you're looking for in marriage is hope, hoping that you can create all these bonds and things that you look forward to doing together. So it's definitely something that can help. In especially if it's things that you enjoy doing together. Like right. I, there's certain things uh, during certain holidays, I'm just not interested, you know, yeah. but if, if you find something that you like to do together, then then do it, you know, and yeah. enjoy it. And, and it does bring that camaraderie together. And it's, it's a very important things you look forward to. Uh, this life can get very mundane and, yeah. and you can get stuck in a rut at times. And some of these different events in life, things that we've created for ourselves, as we've yeah. talked about, or things that uh, are, are nations, traditions, you know, national Uh, national uh, holidays and things like that, or religious holidays, whatever you do, there's a lot of different things that uh, we know are coming up and we get excited for and we prepare for. And and that's fun. Well, it can be. And in our family, there's one big one, or maybe not big, but it's big to us. We enjoy it every week. Every week. It's our ice cream night. And that's kind of unique to our family. We hope to pass it on to others because, hey, I think it's a great thing to do. Yeah. So did we want to talk about how that came to yeah. About so yeah. we were doing a Bible study years and years ago. Our kids were small, and they um, we were going through Hebrews and Hebrews eleven specifically, and the Hall of Faith, right? And, and so it's a fun chapter to go through. But to explain faith to a child was, you know, challenging. You know, because they they just they they want to understand faith, and we're going through the stories. And as you go through the stories in Hebrews eleven, you get an understanding of faith. Well. I was like, well, okay, the, the, the important thing for a Christian here is we have a good father who doesn't lie, and he always tells the truth, and he makes a promise to us. And our promise is that if we believe in Jesus Christ, we get eternal life. Yeah. That's very simplistic, okay? I, that's the simplistic level. And so all we do is we believe that, and we have a hope that is in heaven. So we have a faith, a hope. And um, what's the other and one? And with patience, we wait with because patience, the hope right. is yet to come. So. And we, with patience and joy, we wait for this. And that's all there in Hebrews, right. the, the faith, hope, patience right there. And and so specifically in Romans uh, 11, 11. Hebrews 11. 11. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hebrews 11, 11, it states that Sarah, you know, judged him faithful who hath promised. And that's really at the heart of a Christian is we, we don't see all these things. And so we judge God faithful with promised. So I told the kids like, hey, I am a good father, hopefully, and uh, I make a promise and I'm going to keep it. I'm not going to tell you a lie. I'm going to keep my promises. And what if I promise that next week you're going to get ice cream? Would you believe that? And they say, well, yeah, sure. Yeah, why not? And uh, so I'm like... So on, on actually at the time I think it was on Friday night or whatever it was, yeah. uh, we're gonna have ice cream and you just have to wait for it though you have to wait patiently for it and that's your hope so the ice cream is actually your hope and I'm the promise giver and I'm gonna keep my promise you believe it and you wait patiently. And so I thought it was a good picture of what we were talking about. And so from then on, every Wednesday, well, we moved it a couple days, but from now on, it's on Wednesday and we have 
ice cream night. And uh, so we actually just talked about it this Wednesday to make sure, hey, does everyone know why we do this? So sometimes we don't talk about it. We don't do anything. We don't sit down and be like, okay, let's open up to Hebrews 11. Uh, sometimes we just celebrate and eat ice cream. But then every once in a while, it's like, hey, guys, why do we do this? We don't want to get yeah. in a rut. And yes, it's fun and all that, but what is the reason behind it? And so we do that. Yeah, it's good to remember what your traditions <laughs> right. were originally about. What they mean. So, so or else we're just getting fat eating ice cream. <laughs> right. So, so, yeah. Yep. So that's a... That's our one of the traditions that we've come up with that we've enjoyed through the years for a lot of years, actually. Sure. So, yeah. So, what are some other examples of traditions you could start together? Obviously, this isn't exhaustive. Right. Uh, you can search around, and you and the fun thing is is talking to other people and see what they do, and like yeah. hey, you know, I like that. And actually, this first one is something that we heard people doing, and we didn't do for many many years because we didn't have anybody watch our kids. But we did it at home somewhat, and and that is a date night, right? Yep. And so I think it is good for couples, whether you have to do it at home and in some kind of cool way, you know, set it up at your house. Bring dinner home and then just go into your bedroom and and uh, talk and do whatever and have the kids out, outside and doing whatever. I don't know. You got to be creative. Right. But uh, date night. Um, travel traditions you put down. I don't understand what you mean by travel traditions. Uh, I don't really like traveling. Okay, well, I like to travel, but yeah. growing up, um, most every year around Thanksgiving or Christmas, sometimes we'd switch. We would go to Wisconsin and visit my oh, sure. family, my aunts and uncles, whatever. And so that was something I always looked forward to. So for me, you know, that was a tradition that I really enjoyed. And these other ones are traditions, but I don't know, like, are they really tradition traditions? It depends on how you do them, like cooking and baking together. We always do that. I mean, that okay, is but always. like, there are certain times where you have, like, well, like New Year's Day, so we made that a special day for us, right. and uh, and so we, we don't really celebrate Christmas. It's Elizabeth's birthday is on Christmas, yeah. and so we moved a lot of that stuff to New Year's Day, and we just made it a big celebration of the New Year, and we made everybody had to cook something, and yeah. they got lazy with it over the years. But you know that was like something we looked forward to. We'd be in the kitchen cooking and eating everybody's food, and it was just a nice time, and that was something everyone looked forward to. I tried to change some of those traditions and the kids won't have it. They're like, no, we have to make this, we have to make this. And so they look forward to very specific things. So, yeah. yeah. Because it's nostalgic and it's what we've always done. You can't mess with it. Yep. And and I want to change it. (laughs) And they don't want to. So, and then I have one more outdoor activities, which obviously depends on the season, but like... In the summer, we like to swim, right. you know, or in the fall or winter, do bonfires. Once and- again, I don't know how these are traditions. Like, I like to swim anytime okay, in the summer. Okay, but it could be, but it could be that it comes to like, you know, the opening of the pool or the opening of, oh, you know, the first yes. bonfire of the year is like a big <laughs> deal. I don't know. These like, are examples. I get it. Right. Like whatever you could come up with. But I mean, I remember a lot of fun times around a bonfire. And so it's like something we do. Now, maybe since it's not on a specific day or a specific whatever, I don't know, but whatever. Yeah, maybe there's things that you do around a bon- bonfire that are traditional. Maybe. Yeah. And so maybe the date isn't necessarily traditional, but maybe when you get around, you do s'mores. Yeah. Or maybe you sing songs, or maybe right. you talk, tell stories, or it's your turn, mom, to tell a story about when you were a kid, or dad. Something like that. You know, be creative yeah. about it. But these, I think those things are very important for marriage. Yeah. Hey, this is Joshua Charleston, the producer of The Mike Charleston Show. Thank you for listening to the show. If you want to follow us, we're on Facebook at Mike Charleston Show and Instagram at underscore Mike Charleston Show. Please support us on Patreon for exclusive content. This episode is over, but if you want more, check out the website at fellowshipofbelievers.org for more information. The Mike Charleston Show has been brought to you by Fellowship Believers.